Hello everybody, it's Heaven. In my stream, uh, people frequently ask me about balance. What is my balance opinion? How do I feel about the current balance? Do I have any ideas or suggestions about what to improve, what to do different? And I'm reluctant to make balance videos because I feel like if I get too involved with balancing, my perspective on the game changes and I'm going to enjoy it less as a player because everything becomes relative subject to change and complicated. But I feel like this video is going to be alright. I'm not going to dive too deep into the dark ocean of balancing. I'm not going to participate in any political discussions about balancing, uh, but I'll just share some ideas. The first idea I uh, have for you is the tech ACU. The T2 and T3 upgrade on the ACU don't only unlock higher level structures to build, but they also increase the build power and the HP of your ACU. The values have been changed in the August and November 2016 patches for the last time. And I realized this is long ago, but let me just uh, briefly uh, describe what happened there. The HP of an Aeon ACU that is upgraded to D2 used to be 14,000 and after this patch just 13,000. So a reduction of 1,000 HP, which is about 10% of the total HP. And the HP of a T3 ACU used to be 17,000. And after these patches, it is down to 14,000, which is an almost 20% reduction. And the cost and the build time of the T2 upgrade has been increased. The T2 ACU build power has been decreased from 100 26 to 100, which is an about 20% decrease. So these are the numbers. And uh, I gotta say, I uh, agree with the HP values, uh, most of them anyway. Like the new HP values are consistent with the new balance. So uh, these make sense considering how much HP the health upgrades of combat ACUs get and so on. The uh, T2 ACU, uh, I feel, though, is overall too bad compared to GUN. TML is uh, quite popular, so uh, in team games you see people in secure spots that are in between uh, two flank players, like the mid slot on Wonder, for example. You see people make TML uh, with their T2 ACU. You still see that, but uh, you see less PD creep. PD creep has never been a really strong option because uh, PDs don't move. So uh, it's, it's very dependent on, uh, on getting the upgrade fast, moving uh, to the place where you want the PD to be. And uh, ideally that's going to be close to the enemy base where the PD actually has the chance to deny something and destroy something. So uh, I feel like T2PD creep never been a, a very good option, uh, but uh, it's, it's uh, even less popular now uh, after this, uh, this change. So uh, my suggestion is to revert the cost and build time increase of the T2 upgrade. Leave the HP as is, but uh, just uh, don't make it uh, as expensive. And uh, maybe we are going to see some more uh, PD creep and, and not just like your average gun ACU army right click sort of simulator. And about the T3 ACU, I think uh, the changes to the T3 ACU had some very bad side effects. So T3 calm drops have uh, virtually disappeared from the game, at least from my uh, gameplay experience. So they probably still happen on Setons because everything there is highly efficient and fine-tuned. I can't talk much about Setons because I don't play it myself, but uh, I guess there's also some odd letter game here and now where you see a T3 calm drop. But this happens nowhere near as often as in the past. I, I don't think it was like an epidemic at any point. It, it was never too much. It was just a, like a strategy that you saw once in a while. And when you did, it was usually fun. And uh, that is pretty much gone now. Now you drop your T3 ACU inside someone's base. And the engineers uh, that have been assisting the T3 factory in that base or like the upgrading T2 factory in that base are typically enough uh, to counter your calm drop together with uh, some land factory spamming arty. So I feel like uh, T3 calm drop not, not a good option anymore uh, because of this uh, build power decrease. So I think the T3 ACU should get its old build power back for the sake of calm drops. 
and uh, I think like mass and power are going to restrict this ACU anyway. So build power is not the only factor, but there, there should not be like a hard cap to the efficiency of that ACU uh, that, that is this restricting uh, because of build power. And maybe the three ACU needs an like an HP value that's in the middle of what it used to have and what it has now that could make it more viable. My next idea is about the Aeon Heavy Shield upgrade on the ACU. So uh, this upgrade is a super late game upgrade on the Aeon ACU. It's outrageously expensive and it gives you 44,000 HP. It's the kind of upgrade that lets you zigzag your way through a Percival army and overcharge a fat boy to death while everybody thought you misclicked and suicide. I got it maybe about once in 200 team games. And in 80% of those games, it had virtually no effect on the outcome of the game. In the remaining 20%, I had about the best time of my random team game faff life. And we are talking about maybe like a maximum of 10 games total. So what happened to this upgrade? Well, the old Aeon personal shield generator upgrade, which is the first of the two uh, shield upgrades Aeon can get, was moved from uh, T2 Pigeon Tining to about Gun Upgrade Tining to match the UEF Nano. And the old Heavy Shield Generator upgrade, the one I was talking about earlier, was moved from Super Late Game to T2 Pigeon Tier to match UEF Shield Upgrade pretty much. And in the new balance, uh, I personally think of the weaker of the two Shield Upgrades as an obstacle on the way to the next one instead of a viable standalone choice. So just putting uh, the resources, the first of the two shield upgrade costs uh, in, into some extra Aurora is, uh, in my opinion, better than uh, getting this first shield upgrade most of the time. And uh, I'd rather have the second shield upgrade immediately and, and not anything in between that like requires an extra cost. So uh, there was actually a short time where UEF Nano and Seraphim Nano were good early game upgrades already. And the Aeon Shield upgrades were sort of lagging behind. They were not moved to early game tier yet. And I think that was a pretty good time. I considered a welcome feature that Aeon needs to rely on the two guns for a while. And as a reward, if the Aeon player lasts against an HP upgraded UEF or Seraphim ACU, they get the earlyish mid game shield upgrade that boosts HP quite significantly. So I don't actually feel like moving the personal shield generator to early game was necessary at all. But if balancers really think that an early game HP upgrade is necessary for Aeon, why not just add the old super late game heavy shield back in as a third available tier? Considering how rarely people actually get to upgrade it, would it be anything but harmless and cool? I think why not? My next idea is about buffing RAS. In its traditional function, the resource allocation system is a build power and tech level inexpensive way of generating a lot of power and some extra mass. UEF and Cybern have one iteration, the RAS, while Aeon and Seraphim get two iterations, namely the RAS and the ARAS, the advanced resource allocation system. The RAS and the ARAS upgrades used to be ridiculously efficient, actually so efficient that they were considered a must-have in pretty much any high-level game that took long enough for them to be available. Now, they are so inefficient that T3 Pigeons have replaced RAS. If you still see an air build using RAS, you are looking at something quite esoteric. And if you see someone upgrade RAS to power their Omni or get their experimental, chances are that person is not in a hurry to finish that project anytime fast. RAS and ARAS are now a late game choice and no longer part of any build that tries to fight the clock. What baffles me the most though is that the factions that have only one iteration of RAS actually get the more power efficient RAS for the mass invested than the ARAS faction. The justification that UEF and Siren get engineering stations while Aeon and Seraphim don't has been that UEF and Siren don't have access to ARAS all along. But now UEF and Siren get the best out of both worlds, the engineering stations and the better RAS, which is plain wrong. So I'd say either buff the ARAS or hand out engineering stations to all factions. What's important about any RAS buff 
is that it needs to find the middle ground between making it objectively the best source of economy versus making it a nice to have late game options for team games in sleepless summer nights. I feel like both is extreme. Either it's entirely useless or it's uh, completely overpowered. And uh, I think, uh, I think uh, one should look for the middle ground and just make it a little bit better than it is now. My next idea is about fire beetles. The fire beetles should not instantly kill from mid-air when you land a transport full of them on someone's head. I can see why people would complain about that and it used to be like that for a long time. But I don't think the lowered alpha damage, increased area damage and newly added EMP put them in a good position. So I don't like the new fire beetles. I'd like them to have their old stats space consumption in transports like a T1 unit, just like it used to be, but they should only explode when the beetle actually connects with the target and not when it just gets killed. And there should be a restriction that they can only explode when they're on the ground for a certain time, like a few seconds. This is going to prevent the beetles from, well, killing an ACU by accident because the ACU is killing the beetle before the beetle arrives. And it's also going to make sure that uh, the beetles cannot land on some ACU's head before actually touching the ground and kill it immediately. And I believe that these two things were actually what made people angry about dying to beetle snipes, not the snipe itself. So ideally we would see beetle snipes again with uh, these changes, but uh, we won't have the whining about unfair balance, broken game, yada yada. And my next idea is about buffing combat support ACUs. The only times I see anyone use combat upgraded support ACUs is when they know exactly that they have won the game long ago and they can spend some time fapping around with cool luxury things, also known as support ACUs. I'd like to see combat upgraded support ACUs that have an effect on the game, not only the kind of support ACU that symbolizes your long past victory. Perhaps the solution is to make the gateway cheaper or to lower the combat support ACU's build time. The cost of the unit itself should be enough of a restriction already and I think there's little danger that we are going to see these dominating the meta if only the gate costs and or the build time get changed. I hope you enjoyed my balance ideas that could make FAV more fun. This video was primarily made for entertainment and educational purposes. But if any balancer feels inspired to discuss any of these with uh, their colleagues, that's of course very cool. That is going to be all for this one. If you are interested in tutorials or want to catch one of my streams, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Okay, I can kill him. Oh, they aren't assisting anymore. I'm pretty sure I didn't cancel that by accident, but I must have. <laughs> Whatever. Mixing in uh, some scouts. Because I want to see stuff. I'm not gonna send the gunships away to keep some of them because he's got a shield. And they're fighters, they'd kill my gunships anyway. Yeah, I can't afford to save some gunships. Some micro mistake. Not correctly shielding his ACU. Eh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Almost didn't reach it. Yeah, interestingly, he had T2 to make uh, shields, but he didn't have T2 to make flock. Nice kind of T2.
No, go for air player expansion. Commissar is just fighting it off. That's what you get for playing front without radar. Or scouts. The air player has so many T3 mixes. He made two T3 mixes, honestly. Yeah, I forgot those. Epic Corsair Snipe. <laughs> he was self-destructing sooner, so I can't keep my gunships, but it didn't work. Need to keep up the pressure now. Oh, he quit. Well, that was quick. <laughs> 